Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're working on the M52 engine again. And today we're gonna to be addressing a very, very common problem regarding coolant loss on this BMW M52 engine. Now this part, obviously, from what I know, is prone to fail. But in all my time that I've been working with the M52 engine, I myself have never seen one of these actually fail or leak. You can correct me if I'm wrong on this, now, my black E6 with the M52 engine hasn't had this changed, and it's neither leaking either. And obviously, I know there's a big thing about changing this part on these engines, otherwise it can be detrimental and obviously blow off while you're driving or break off. So therefore, we are gonna be changing it on this car just as a precaution more than it actually needs to be changed because it isn't leaking and doesn't actually have to be changed. So we are gonna go over that, and I'm also gonna show you how to drain the coolant on this engine because as many of you guys know, coolant is critical to keep the engine from overheating, and therefore we are gonna be changing it because I don't know when it was changed, and obviously it has lost all this coolant um, due to a coolant leak, which I, I told you, I did replace due to the lower coolant hose, which I'll show you when we actually drain the coolant. So let's get onto this video. What? God damn, get it done with you. Woo. When the blow up now, everybody's so unusual with it. Shit. Times in his rhymes because his memories we run into New York, so you know. Okay, guys, so to start off with, we're going to be draining the coolant. And now I've already undone that. Yours may be tight, depending on if the coolant's ever been changed. All you need to do is use a big flathead screwdriver, stick it in here, and turn it. It's very, very simple. Try and use the smallest one you've got with a big head to just turn it, and you can see there, mine's literally untight and ready to go. I am going to put a drainer under here with a coolant drain pan so we can drain the coolant out. Um, I don't want to have the lift too high because otherwise the coolant will go all over my floor, so I need to probably lower it down as it's draining so it goes straight into the bucket and doesn't splash everywhere. So as you can see here, we're now just gonna turn this until it unloosens. As you can see, the coolant's now coming out. So we just turn it and turn it. And you can see what I mean by it splashing. You can see there, guys, it is dripping, but very, very slowly. And if I press on the top, lower radiator hose, you can see it come even faster. That's where it's pushing all the coolant now. And I think this is probably because this car has been sitting and not been driven, haven't let it warm up or nothing. So we are just gonna leave it to finish doing this thing. But that's how you'd actually drain your coolant on your BMW. But also, if I was you, I would actually drive the car, let it warm up, let the coolant get around the system. Otherwise you end up like this if you try and bleed it while it's cold and drain the system just because Obviously where it ain't worked itself around the engine, so it's all just sitting everywhere, let it work itself around, and then when you pull it, it should come completely out in a nice steady stream and not like this. Now I just want to point out guys, you can see it's still draining. There is roughly about 10 litres in that this engine has inside it, so do be aware of that. Make sure you have a big enough drainer to fit all the coolant in because it's got about 10 litres. Like I said, I'm just still leaving it to drain down as you can see leaving it to do its thing because it's drained out, but there's still a lot inside the system. You can feel how much it's actually got when you squeeze the lower radiator hose. Um, I could have pulled that, but in the same sense, I would rather not, I would rather let it drain from here because I want to flush the whole radiator anyway. I want to get everything out because, as you can see, when my friend had the coolant leak, um, he was just filling it up with whatever he had, be it water or any coolant, just to be able to drive it. So it's got red coolant in it, which you should not have red coolant inside here. It should have a blue one. That's why I'm changing it as well, because it is the wrong coolant. And that is detrimental to these M52 engines because of the temperature they run at. So it has to be the right one. And obviously, because it's a magnesium block, um, the coolant is critical as well to protect the engine, um, to get around it quickly, and to obviously stop it overheating. So that's why this isn't the right coolant in the first place. So we've got to get this out and put the proper coolant actually in this car. So I just want to let the whole system completely flush. Okay guys, so now we've got the coolant out of this M52 engine from the bottom of the radiator, we're gonna go ahead and replace the part that many of you guys always say fails on your cars and many people seem to believe it fails. Now, I'm not saying it don't fail, um, but I haven't had it fail. And I've got a car with this same exact engine on 173,000 miles and it still hasn't failed even today. So I don't know what people are doing to actually make that problem because it hasn't been a problem for me. Um, but we are gonna go ahead and replace it anyway on this one. Um, just obviously, as I said, you for peace of mind and because it's an easy job, so why not just do it? So the part I'm actually speaking about is this part right here. This is what they like to call the coolant flange or Mickey Mouse flange or 
whatever you want to call it. Now, as many of you guys know, to remove it is two 10 mil bolts, just to remove it. And you've also got this numb reusable clip that they put around it. Now, we're not going to be using the coolant flange and we're not going to be using that clip. Now, this is one of the reasons I actually chose to replace it because as many of you guys know, it's only cheap. It only cost me 10 pound for a new bit. And that wasn't a Chinese part either. That was actually from um, MB Performance. I don't know who they are. There's a company online that I ordered it from. But for 10 pound, I thought, oh well, I'm not going to argue with it. I'll do it because I was changing the coolant anyway. If I wasn't changing the coolant on this, I probably wouldn't have done it because it means I have to drain the coolant and do all that. But I was going to do it anyway. So I thought better off to just target that while we're here at the same time. So we are going to go ahead and change that. Many of you guys have probably seen this many, many times from other people. Many of you have probably already done it because it's not a hard job to even get to. I am curious though to see the condition of this because many people say they crumble, they're deteriorated, but this one hasn't been changed. This one hasn't had no coolant issues apart from the radiator hose. So I am curious to see what kind of condition this one's in when we get it off. So we'll just remove it anyway. Let's take out the sensor on the top here and just move that out of the way. So it's not in our way while we do it. And let's remove this coolant hose from this locking clip right here. So it's ready to move. And we're obviously just gonna use our 10 mil and just to remove it, just like that. We've got the bolt right there and that's what the bolts are gonna look like. And we'll just do this one as well. These ain't one on tight either, which I would, would have expected anyway. So that's okay. And now what we'll go ahead and do is just pull this out. So I might just use a little pry tool to help it come out. Some more, just like that. And as you can see, this one right here isn't in that bad of a state. Now many people seem to believe that these go wrong. They're in a bad state. They crack, they explode. This one hasn't got any signs of that whatsoever. Um, and it's still in good condition. Now, as I said, I am going to replace it because we're here and I do have a new one. So I'm just going to take this off and we'll put the new one on um, because obviously, you know, better to be safe than sorry, as I suppose. And this engine could be different to my one. Who knows? I mean, I could go down the road in 10 miles and it could explode off and then, you know, I'll be thinking I should have actually done it. So therefore, I will just replace it anyway. So what I'm going to use here is probably my air tool just to cut it off. Okay guys, so as you can see there, we've now replaced the coolant flange. You saw how easy it was to actually replace. And obviously it wasn't hard at all. Obviously I've had to cut off a bit of the um, coolant pipe itself. And that's because of this non-usable um, clamp. I've actually had to cut through it. And obviously you saw what I used to cut through it. I used obviously my air grinder to cut through the obviously um, clamp. And obviously this coolant hose is just obviously just messed up anyway from being on here. You can see that that's my old coolant flange right there. And to be honest with you, it ain't that bad. When you think this is on 130K and people say they actually fail, which I don't disbelieve they actually fail, but this one's not in that bad of a condition. Now, bearing in mind my other Black E60 with the M52 engine is still on this original plastic piece on 173,000 miles, and I haven't had any issues with it. I am obviously though gonna go ahead and obviously replace this because it's only cheap to do it anyway when I actually bring that Black E60 in and we'll just put a new one of these on the aluminium one only because it's easy to do and I'm going to be draining the corn anyway. But you can see here when people say they actually fail on around 100k that isn't actually precise because this one is actually still in good condition. The seal's fine, everything's fine and there was nothing wrong with it and obviously that crack there is obviously from where I've cut through to remove the clamp but that's about it guys like I said otherwise it wouldn't have still had any issues but in the same sense this one does look a lot better than obviously this plastic piece so you know, I'll give it credit where it's due and obviously it's probably gonna be worth it at some time because who knows, I could have got this out on the road within five miles. I say it hasn't failed, no, my luck it probably would have failed. So there we go, we've got that changed now. Okay guys, so I've also bled the coolant system. Obviously I topped it up, it took seven liters to actually fill this up. Obviously I run the electric water pump, let it bleed the system and it's done its job. Now, as I said, this was actually empty. I only put a little bit in just to be able to move it onto the lift because I knew I was going to be flushing it anyway because my friend said he had been using whatever he could just to get him around, whether that be water or the red antifreeze, which I wasn't happy about. The coolant's actually full now. I just removed the cap so you guys 
can probably see in there, but the stick is now up. So it's full of the correct coolant. It was the blue coolant. Do remember that. Don't go using Prestone or red coolant in these cars. It is actually only the blue one. Make sure it's certified for the year of your car and obviously your engine because um, BMW change it all the time. But this one is absolutely blue and um, we've put that in now. Bled it at the water pump, let the heaters run as well while we did that. And now everything's perfect. The corn light's finally gone off after nearly a month of this car being here with the corn light flashing light mad it's now gone off and everything's been done so we're getting this car ready guys and i believe this was the last um engine job you'll see on this car um as you guys know we've done everything on this car now so we're now going to be moving to the interior and doing everything we have to do electronically um, and interior wise to get this car fit for use okay guys so as you've seen i've now shown you how to replace your bmw's m52 coolant flange and this doesn't just apply for the m52 this also applies for the m53s the M54s, and I believe the M55 as well. And this is what I mean, this part can fail and is known to fail, but as I said, I, in my time of dealing with these cars, haven't known this to explode, crack, break, or leak. As I said, that's not to say it doesn't happen, it's just to say I haven't known it to happen. But as I said, I have replaced it and shown you how to replace it in case you guys ever come up with this kind of leak coming from there, you guys know how to replace it and get it off very, very easily. Now, as I said, they can fail so if they do fail you guys can easily source them and it is well worth replacing it as peace of mind as well because it's only 10 pounds to replace so thank you for watching this video guys and i hope this video is going to help many of you change that corner flange on your bmw thank you very much for watching it's bmw dr dean here and goodbye